Well, I failed. I got the original. And not quite brand new, but much newer. Maybe somebody will appreciate the pairing. We got some real JDM cars here. Fair Lady Z. And I believe it's an S13 240SX. Nice collection here. So, welcome back to uh, Don't Be Kurt, where today we've done cars and coffee, and now we are preparing to do a little bit of maintenance work to the prize Audi. Um, the maintenance today is going to be changing the sway bar bushings in the back as they've uh, died, and I went with um, some new speed bushings because doing some investigation, as uh, you'll see here, underneath the car, it looks like the previous owner or whoever has a I'll put a new speed um, sway bar on the back of this vehicle. So I'll just put the appropriate bushings on and we'll just go from there. There is the new speed uh, sway bar. You can see the surface rusts as this was a New Jersey car. So I don't think it's too terrible considering where it's from, but certainly more than what you would see here with Missouri cars. As while we get snow, we don't get nearly that much. All right, so investigating a little closer. So looks like I got to loosen this one here on the top. And then there's another one you can't probably quite see there that also needs to be loosened. And it looks like it's going to require some open face wrenches. And that is one thing in my tool cabinet I don't really have. So as kind of a um, hobbyist with cars and mainly an IT professional and photographer in my main careers, 
I don't really have the best set of tools. So I always start a job and it always requires hopping in the car to an auto zone or Napa and buying yet another tool. So looks like that'll be the case. Primarily because all of my open face wrenches are, I guess, imperial size. I don't have any metric ones and I'm fairly certain the Audi is not going to line up with these, nor do I want to try and use these and then strip a bolt and then a whole bunch of trouble. So off to the store we go. And I guess since I'm going to be taking off for a second to get some tools, might as well make the job a little bit easier and let's get a little bit of a uh, penetrating oil, in this case PB Blast, on these uh, bolts and screws and see if we can... Uh, get them to loosen up a little bit or be less likely to be stuck or break when I try to torque them off. And get the passenger side here, get all nice and juicy. So as usual, I have to park the cars in the grass so I have room to operate and move back and forth and I'm gonna hop into a car I haven't introduced to the channel yet but this is my 2008 97 Boxster S and you could have a worse car to run to the parts store with or a runaround vehicle and that is the job of this car today more on this car at a future date though And away we go. Right at 70 degrees, which is normally my limit for top down driving in this car. Hey, how you doing? You can certainly have a much worse car to go and get parts, like I was saying. <clears throat> so it might not be the best parts store, but where I live, I'm very fortunate that Napa and Advance Auto Parts is legitimately just right down the road. Um, this is legitimately we've taken one turn outside of my house and it's going to go straight for a little while and we'll hit Napa. So at the Napa, found the tools, getting ready to check out and head back to the house. So that trip um, was a little bit expensive and kind of gets me thinking that I should probably order a full set of tools and get the thing done instead of having to keep piecemealing each thing I need. It's kind of weird though for me, as I've always had um, either Japanese or European cars that I didn't have a set of metric open face wrenches. So $35 later, I got two 13 millimeter ones. I know, probably pretty expensive, but I'm in the middle of doing this and I need to get it done. All right, so there is the bracket. And as you can see, we got the top nut off. Just trying to get this bottom one off and we should be clear sailing. I cannot get this screw to come out. I use vice grips. I've used the actual 13 mil. Well, start with a 13 millimeter wrench. And even the vice grips tightened and squeezing as top as hard as possible. This thing is on there solid. Uh, if I turn this nut on this side, it turns the whole thing no matter what I do. So I gotta go order some new screws and then prepare for another weekend where I get off the get this cut off and we'll go from there. So this weekend, while we failed an Audi, decided to uh, tackle one nagging project on, again, 
car I haven't introduced to this channel, my uh, 987 Boxster S. So last spring, we had some freak lightning storm, and my theory at this point is that the car got electrified and somehow tried to open its top while it was in the latch position, thus breaking all struts, rods, anything connected to the vertical top. So I decided to fix it myself. Not, not, a, not a terrible task. Sourcing the parts was and figuring out what the parts that were broken was terrible. So eventually I figured out I needed two more rods to manipulate this, the tonneau cover back here. And I saw the price that Porsche wanted for them and I decided to cheap out and uh, go um, aftermarket. And here's what I ended up with. So here is my original part that was on the car. Those who are familiar with it uh, might see that it's bent pretty badly. Now, granted, this top part is supposed to be bent at a certain angle, but it's nowhere near within spec. And again, I don't even know how this happened. It was really weird. And I'll probably have to do a story about this on another date. Here, though, is the part I ordered from a company that not only did they say it was a like-for-like -like replacement, asked for my VIN number and everything and validated things and sent me not one, but two sets of these because the first set also didn't fit. Now, if you notice here, the part that would go into the um, the tunnel cover mount is totally two different sizes. Not at all at close to a spec. And then, and I don't know if I can, if the camera's gonna show this very well, they are off by a few millimeters. But those who know German engineering, you know that every millimeter counts. So it sucked. Anyways, after a while of sulking about this and kind of sitting on this a little bit too long, I finally went and ordered some OEM parts from Porsche St. Louis. And as you can see now, the top now goes up and down. Now it was kind of ghetto before I did this. So anytime I needed to take the top up and down after fixing half of it, I had to um, essentially... So it was kind of ghetto before I fixed it. And what I mean is, legitimately to make the top work, I had to get out of the car, flip the tonneau cover up, go back in the car, flip the switch, get the convertible top down, put the tonneau cover back down. And at that point, those who might be aware, it's not locked down. So legitimately, this thing could be flapping or whatever, and it wasn't ideal. It's totally not something you should, I recommend anybody doing. Anyways, it's now fixed. I'm happy and just in time for winter to park the car. Yay me. Again, don't be Kurt. So that does it for today. Thanks for watching. As you can see, I had a little success. And if you like seeing failure, success, cars and coffee, all that, please like, subscribe, all that, and have a great day. Catch y'all later.